Good morning and welcome to our Easter service uh, once again live from our home. We're really delighted that uh, if you're part of Kings, you're joining us or maybe you're tuning into this, this live stream for the first time. We really are delighted to have you with us. For, for yeah. those... For those, <laughs> for those who are, are part of Kings, you may have been taking part in our continuous prayer event that we've been running from 6 o'clock on Friday evening, on Good Friday, all the way through to 10 o'clock this morning. And I'd be really, or we'd be really keen to know if what God's been saying to you at this time. And if you're able to sum up in maybe a sentence and email it to us, we'd really love to get a feel for what God's been saying to us as a body over this time. Sarah's email address for the main one to be emailing things to at the moment is sarah at kingsinverness.com. But when I was out this morning doing a, a prayer walk, first thing this morning as it's part of my time uh, this weekend, and I have to I have to say I got up quite early this morning, earlier than I normally would, and so far I've done 8,437 <laughs> steps already. Now one of the benefits about Facebook Live is you can have a wee snooze while the preacher's on, so that had been my plan until I remembered it's actually me that's meant to, to give the message this morning. But one of the things that was really on my heart when I was praying, because we where we stay in Inverness, uh, if you go to the top of the hill you can look out right across Inverness, is that people would have a really soft heart today to, to be open to the good news that we're celebrating today about Jesus' death and his resurrection. There are so many churches live streaming up and down the country. Um, and in Inverness, we know of lots of churches that are doing exactly what we're doing. And our prayer this morning is that, that people's lives would be impacted and touched by the revelation that Jesus is who he said he was. So before we go any further, as we've been saying every week, Guys, start to share this on your social media timeline. Start yeah. to share it. Hit that watch party button and let's get the good news of Jesus out there today. So we're going to begin. Sarah's going to lead us in a time of worship in just a moment. But before we do that, we just want to pray. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you sent Jesus to pay the price for all our sin. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we are so grateful today that we can experience full forgiveness because of Jesus' actions. Father God, would you just be with us? Even though we are scattered, would you join us together through your Holy Spirit as we begin this morning just to worship and lift up your glorious name. In Jesus' name, Amen.
Fabulous. So we are just about to head over to Rosie. I think she's maybe sitting on standby somewhere. I can't see around this corner. There she is. Good morning, Rosie. Good morning, singer. Oh, oh, love that medley worship set. It was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. So Rosie's going to be bringing our kids talk this morning. So if you've got little ones sitting about, hopefully we'll have some sound for you this week. It sounds like it's pretty good this morning. And so if you've got little ones, yeah. come snuggle them round and have a little listen to what Rosie's going to say to us. Thanks so much, Rosie. And happy Easter. <laughs> happy Easter to you, Sarah. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to spend some time with you this morning because today is a very special day. Can you tell me what, what day it is today? It is Easter. It is. And a very happy Easter to you. Christ is risen. Whenever I say that this morning, I want you to reply back saying, indeed, he is risen. Will we try it? Christ is risen. Indeed, indeed he is, he risen. is risen. Amazing. Okay. Oh, just spotted something over here. What's this? Don't tell me what this is. Yeah, you're right. It is a cocoon or a chrysalis. Now, do you know what's inside there? Yeah, it is a caterpillar. I wonder how the caterpillar feels inside here. It must feel quite trapped. It must be quite small in there. But we know what's happening afterwards, don't we? What happens exactly? Comes a beautiful butterfly. I wonder if the caterpillar knew that that was what was going to happen when he was in there. You know what? It's kind of similar to how we are now, isn't it? We're kind of all in our houses. You know, we can't really go out and see our friends or do what we usually do. I wonder if there's anything else in here. Oh. Hmm. If you didn't know what that is, you wouldn't think there was anything in there either. It's kind of just small and just kind of round. But what we know is something pokes its beak, doesn't it? Comes up. Cute little chick. Now this kind of actually reminds me of the Easter story. But before we get to that, let's think about and remember what Jesus did when he was on earth. Can you think of any of the things he did to help us, any of the miracles? Yes, he made the blind man see, absolutely. Yes, five loaves and two fishes, well done for that one. And yet, the man who couldn't walk and then was able to walk. So exciting. Yeah, so many amazing things. But then something sad happened, didn't it? He was put on a cross and he died on the cross. And then he was taken down and put in the tomb. And then, well, actually, do you want to come with me and see? See the tomb? Yeah, we can actually go, hopefully. This works. I can just try and get you in the shot. Okay, let's go over and see too. You said it's just a tent. It's a tomb. Okay, so it's inside here. Well, there's no body in here. In fact, all there is is the linen that Jesus was wearing. And look, the stone has been rolled away. You know why? Because Jesus rose from death to life. Because Jesus was, is God. And he is king over everything. And he stomped on death because he is king over death. And you know what? He's also human. Jesus was God and human at the same time. And because he's human, if we stay with him, we can rise up with him. Do you want to practice that? Okay, how about you want to at home curl into a little ball, okay? And when I say one, two, three, I want you to jump up and say, rise and shine. Just shout it as loud as you can. Okay, let's go. One, two, three. Rise and shine. Well, actually, because he is king and we're his children, when we stay close to him, we become kings and queens. So Christ is risen. What do you say? Indeed, he is risen. That tomb was kind of 
I think I need to go and sit down and let's go back to our seats. Okay, hopefully I can get in the shot again. I want you to imagine something with me because I'm sure you all have a really good imagination. Hands up if you like treasure hunts. You to imagine that at home, someone made a treasure hunt for you with loads of shiny jewels, loads of gold coins, and they put it all in the ground, in the mud for you to find. So you look in and you find a red one, a blue one, a yellow one, and you pick it up. You just dust off the mud. Do you know, Jesus wants you to rise and shine. He is calling you to rise and shine, and he says you are precious more precious than any gemstone, any jewel, and more beautiful than a butterfly. And you know what? He doesn't just raise you up and say bye. He wants to stay with you. Put your hand on your head if you think Jesus likes playing Lego with you. He does. Put your finger on your nose if you think he likes making pizza with you. Clap your hands if you think he likes dancing with you. Well, he likes to do all of those things with you. Sometimes he just wants to look you in the face and say, you are awesome. And he might even have something else to say. So you have to listen to hear what he wants to say to you. And he wants you to look at him. Okay, so we've had rise and shine. We've had that he wants to stay with you. And we have one more thing. So I did the three S's just for you, Sarah. He didn't tell me what kind of crisps these are. Yes, cheese and onion. Now, when I was at school, in my pack lunch, I used to have ready salted every day. Now, I hope I'm not going to get into trouble because I did see my mum was just watching there. So basically, I do like ready salted. I mean, they're a fine bag of crisps. They are. But you know what? Sometimes I just like something different, you know? Not every day. So I have to swap them at school. But even though you're allowed to do that anymore, but I would swap them sometimes for prawn cocktail, cheese and onion, salt and vinegar. You know, just to mix it up a bit. And in the same way, Jesus likes to do swaps with you. He likes to take away all the stuff that's maybe not so good and instead give you something amazing. Would you like to pray with me to see if there's anything you want to swap with him? I'm going to pray. You can pray as well if you like. So, Jesus, what would you like to swap with me? Okay, now you can ask the same thing and see what he says to you. Okay, let's see what he's going to say to me. I'll share. You don't have to share, but okay, loneliness. Well, that makes sense because these days, you know, I can't go out and see my friends. Okay, Jesus, I'm going to give you my loneliness. Jesus, what are you going to give me? Joy and love. That is amazing. That's the best present ever. I'm so super excited about it. Now, I want to tell you all that, you know, I'm not saying that tomorrow everything's going to be back to normal and you're going to be back to school. But where you are now, you're able to shine like a king and queen. You're able to stay with him, stay with him in all you do. And you're able to make some swaps all the time as you spend time with him. Now to celebrate and have a party with that later, you might want to do one of a few things. Maybe you want to make a dance up about that. So you can choose a song or what kind of dance. Well, you could imagine maybe like a, a caterpillar um, and then going out. So you could try and make a dance that goes in and out or something. You know, make it into a dance. You could even make it a workout. You know, you could do some, what do you call those again? Jumping jacks or some burpees, you know, showing the dying and the rising because Jesus brought us from death to life. Um, or you might want to make some music, buy pots, pans, tambourines, anything in the house. And you might want to sort of start quietly and then you know, when that butterfly pops out or when that chick pops out or when Jesus rose. You might also want to do some art. Now, I hope you can see it. 
This is a piece by Charity Woman Webb, and you can see a circle here, and life is just coming, coming from it. So it's really pouring from it. So you might want to do something like that, or think of the butterfly. I okay, I've been practicing drawing. I think I need to practice anymore. Do you think that looks like a crown? A little bit, not so much. Okay, we could always rely on you two guys to be honest, but I am it's kind of going to be a story picture. So what the story is about a girl who lost her crown and could go on an adventure to find it and see those bits there, I'm gonna make them into leaves. I'm gonna add in some green. So I if you if you do anything, I'd love to see it in the comments or share what you thought of today. And I just want to say one more time. Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. Happy Easter to you all. And I think, Sarah, have you got a song for us now? We no. have got a song. I think Chris is just going to sort out the camera. Are you going to do some actions for us, Rosie? I'll try and do some actions. <laughs> I think Evie might help you as well if she wants to. Do you want to help? Do you want to come and stand by Rosie at the, at the side? And any, so anyone both, else? Move along a little bit so you stand it either way. Oh, That's easy. it. Yeah, I've lost your custom beat. Let me just kind of do this so it's. And if I stand back a bit. Evie, are you going to help me? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the family affair. Family Should I keep my crown on, Sarah? Tell me again. Lots, lots, keep my crown on. Keep lot, your crown lot, on lots sure. of people on Facebook are suggesting you should wear that crown all the time. So just as a. <laughs> oh, you know, in everyday life, you know, if we're going to Tesco. <laughs> You know what? And then I'll just do my royal wave all the time when I walk around. <laughs> so we want we want to see all the you mums and dads. We want to see all the mums and dads at home off the couch. Yep. Joe Francis, Raj saying you guys need to lead the way here. So get all the kids up and let's let's join with Rosie and Sarah yeah, and Evie. Name them all this, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so guys we know that you guys all love a song we've done a couple of songs haven't we with actions in the past so this is a song that i used to sing when i was probably evie's age a really little girl and it's talking about exactly what what rosie's been been sharing with us this morning that god is not dead that he is alive and so the words chris is going to pop them on the screen if they're there they're already on fantastic it goes like this it says god's not dead no Thank you very much, Rosie. Everyone say goodbye to Rosie. Thanks, Rosie. Bye, everyone. Bye, great great time with you. Happy Easter. <sighs>
45 and it says and suddenly the veil in the sanctuary of the temple was torn down the middle but to understand the significance of those words we're going to have to do a bit of time traveling we have to travel back in time today to the garden of eden in genesis it tells us that god was so close to adam and eve that he actually walked in the garden with them it was they experienced heaven here on earth and Adam and Eve, they were given free reign over everything in the garden apart from one thing. God said, just don't eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil because if you do, you will die. <clears throat> but one day Satan approached Eve in the form of a serpent. And he said, I know God said not to eat the fruit from that tree, but I'm sure he didn't mean it. Come on, you'll be fine. I'm sure you'll be fine. Knock yourself out. So both Adam and Eve, they ate from the, the fruit from the tree doing the one thing that God had asked them not to do. So for the first time, sin entered the world. And sin is such an emotive word in our culture today. And I was trying to think, what was, what is the simplest way that I could explain the word sin? What's the simplest definition? And I think for me, it's when we do the opposite of what it is that God wants us to do. So as a result of their actions, their sin... It caused a separation between them and God. In the same way that if we do something to hurt somebody who really loves us, it can cause a distance in that relationship as well. So they had to leave the garden as a consequence of what they did. But it tells us in Genesis 3.21 that God made clothing from them, clothing for them from the animal skins. And I just think that's an amazing thing to read they had hurt God they disappointed God but before he they had to leave the garden he made them clothes from the skins of animals so the first sacrifice by God for the protection of mankind now just let that sink in let that thought sink in just for a moment but from that time on there was a barrier between God and mankind there was a barrier because of the sin but also there was a physical barrier that came into play. You see, originally God's presence was in the garden with Adam and Eve. Then it rested in the Holy of Holies or in the most holy place in the temple. And if you're trying to imagine what the temple would have looked like, imagine it as the very first church building that ever was. And in the temple there would have been three areas. There would have been the outer courts where the regular folk would have gone, where just every, everyone going about their business, they, they would have gone into the outer courts. Then there was the holy place. And this is where the priests would go to make sacrifices. And in those days, it, the, the word priest meant minister, pastor, church leader. But that's where the priests would have gone to make sacrifices. Then once a year in the holy of holies, the high priest would go in to atone for everybody's sins, the wrongdoings. The high priest would have been like the top dog. Imagine like the Archbishop of Canterbury, the, the, the head of the, the, the church, if you like. But the veil that was in place that separated the holies of holies and the holy place was a veil that actually separated these two places. Now, when we hear the word veil, what do we think of? What kind of comes to mind? When I heard that the word veil, I often think about maybe a wedding and a bride's veil. And from the, my distant memory of our wedding day, I'm trying to remember what Sarah's veil was like, it was a very delicate material. And if you think of it in that context, was it a big deal that it got torn? Probably not really. But actually, the veil was probably more like a curtain, a really thick, multicoloured curtain. And according to historians, it would have taken a myriad of damsels to make it. Now, if only I had a myriad of damsels somewhere around here with a veil. Oh, look at that. Just like that. Now, I don't know how well you'll be able to see. Maybe we could lay it on this, this grey seat here. Now, come on, Gives. There we go. You hold it. You hold it. So, there you can see it. And if you'll just rest it on the, kit, on the seat now, that would be great. Now, I, as you can see in, in my, my, my last few weeks, 
I've taken the time while being at home a lot more to, to practice on my sewing machine and put my home ex skills to... No, I'm not really. <laughs> um, the, the credit has to go to Anne, Hilary, Morvan, Michelle, Alison and Sheila for both researching and making this. Um, when, when we get to the stage where we can meet back together as a congregation, that it'd be great to actually bring this so you can see it um, properly. But the, the temple veil would have been really thick. Almost imagine a bit like a duvet. The approximate thickness would have been the breadth of a hand, so eight or nine centimetres, depending on the size of your hand. It would have been about 72 times this size. So approximately 10 metres by 20 metres. It would have taken 300 men to wash it. So just like in, in our house, it's the <laughs> men that do the washing, uh -huh. just in case you're wondering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, if it took 300 men to wash it, then we have to ask the question, how many women would it have taken to wash it? Probably, Probably just one or two. Yeah, one or two is what <laughs> the conclusion that we came to. So this, this is not something that could have easily have torn. This had to be some sort of supernatural force that did this. So what was, what was going on here and why when this happened? So let me read a little bit from Luke 23 to 47. And this is from Good Friday. It says, by this time, it was about noon. And darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. The light from the sun was gone, and suddenly the veil in the sanctuary of the temple was torn down the middle. Then Jesus shouted, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands, and with those words he breathed his last. When the Roman officer overseeing the execution saw what had happened, he worshipped God and said, Surely this man was innocent. And at the very same time, in the same moment, it tells us in the book of Matthew that the earth shook, rocks split apart and tombs opened. So what is the significance of all this? And this particularly, what is the significance of this veil? Well, the veil being torn signified that the barrier that existed between us and God that started back in the garden had been removed forever. In the same way that God provided the first sacrifice in the garden, God sent Jesus to become the last sacrifice on the cross and this was an amazing act of love mm -hmm. by God towards all of us and sometimes I think people can get the wrong idea about God that he's maybe some sort of angry wrathful God that's only out to punish us but let's look at some facts of the story here <clears throat> Adam and Eve did the opposite of what God wanted yet he still provided clothes for them before they went out the garden when Judas the man who betray betrayed Jesus brought the soldiers to arrest him, Jesus greeted Judas as a friend. Even though he'd done the most terrible thing he could to Jesus, Jesus still greeted him as friend. We've also done things in our lives, I know I have, to disappoint God. Yet he sent his own son to take the blame for all our mistakes. I was watching a TV programme um, the other night and the meatloaf song, um, I'll Do Anything For Love, came on. And there's a line in that which I will, I will attempt to sing. <laughs> it says, And I will do anything for love I run right into hell and back dun, dun. So you know that Sarah is mightily impressed. You can't see her off camera but she's signing me up for choir as we speak. But, <laughs> but that concept of Jesus running right into hell and back that's what Jesus he did for he did it for me and he did it for you as well and when Jesus went into hell and back he defeated death and opened up the way for us to have eternal life through Jesus's actions there is no need now for another day of atonement that was the last day of atonement and because of Jesus sacrifice all our sins all the things that we've done wrong can be forgiven before God if we simply put our trust in Jesus we simply ask him to come into our lives and become Lord over it. But you know what? The removal of the veil means that we can also approach God directly. We can experience all of who he is and all that he has for us. And there's something about the imagery of the scene, the veil being removed, that really kind of spoke to me. So last week I mentioned it was our wedding anniversary, 17 years. And at most weddings, <laughs> the bride will wear a veil. And at the altar, the father will remove the veil and present the bride to the groom. And I think in that, and in that moment, when that happens, 
What was hers becomes his and what was his becomes hers. And the Bible describes the church as Jesus' bride. So in that moment in the temple, God the Father, he's removing the veil, presenting the bride, his people, to Jesus. And in that moment, what was hers, so all our sin, was taken on by Jesus. And what was his, everything that belongs to Jesus, we get to take on. And that's part of the swapping that Rosie was talking about. In John 1, 10 to 12, it says this, He, meaning Jesus, came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognise him. He came to his own people and even they rejected him. But to all who believed in him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. The Bible talks quite a lot about how, because of Jesus' actions, not only are we forgiven, we're actually adopted into God's family. So in the same way that a bride becomes part of the groom's family, we become part of God's family. And as part of that family, the Bible tells us that we have an inheritance. Now an inheritance is normally something that's given after death. And it's because of Jesus' death that we can have access to our inheritance. But unlike a normal circumstance, an inheritance would normally be tinged with sadness because that person's no longer with us. But our inheritance is accompanied by overwhelming joy. In Matthew 28, 1-6 to it says this, Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to the tomb to visit it. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone and sat on it. His face shone like lightning and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the woman. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified, but he isn't here. He has risen from the dead. Just as he said it would happen. Come, see where his body was lying. On that first Easter Sunday, when Jesus rose from the death, from the dead, he defeated death. And because of that, we get to not only share our inheritance, we not only get to access our inheritance, but we get to share our inheritance with him. You know, when Jesus ran into hell and back, the Bible tells us that he actually took with him all authority over heaven and of earth. And today, we can confidently say in some of the songs that we've been singing, you know, Jesus is still the way maker. Mm -hmm. Jesus is still the miracle worker. Jesus is still the promise keeper. Jesus is still the light in the darkness. It doesn't matter how dark the world is. It doesn't matter how dark things may seem, especially at the moment. Jesus is still the light. And when Jesus taught us to pray, he gave us the template of the Lord's Prayer. And he said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I think there's an expectation from Jesus that we'd experience something of heaven here on earth, here and now. We don't have to wait till we die till we experience heaven here on earth. You know, you might be thinking, what, in, what does Chris mean by this concept of an inheritance? In Ephesians 1, 3, it says, God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Every spiritual blessing is available to us here and now. And the, the one thing that always gives me great comfort, you know, there is no sickness and there is no, there is no suffering in heaven. And I believe that we can experience some of that here on earth, even in the midst of the situation that's going on at the moment. The last thing that Jesus did before going back to be with his father, it said he commissioned us to carry on what it was that he started. Jesus said the words that we would do and also see even greater things than he did. Now that, that blows my mind as a concept that we would see and be part of even greater things than we read about in the Bible. But that's exactly what it says. You know, the Easter story doesn't finish when the eggs are gone and all the chocolate is eaten. And my challenge, my encouragement to everyone this Easter is to put your hope and trust in Jesus. Start living as a child of God. Start to claim your inheritance now. 
start to believe and really believe and really live in a place of expectancy that we can start to see heaven here on earth. Because if we stop at the gravesite, if we stop even at Resurrection Sunday, I don't believe we fully get all what God's got for us. He died so we would have life and life in, the, in abundance, fullness of life. And that's something that we can experience right here, right now. And I feel as a church in this, in this time, which is, there's a lot of darkness about, let's raise our expectation levels. Let's set them sky high to, to what God might do in this time. So at this point, we're going to turn over to Mike and Fiona, and they're going to lead us in communion. So we're just going to wiggle the camera around again. Can you hear us? Hi guys. Hi Mike. Yeah. Hi. Hi there. Happy Easter. Oh, happy Easter everyone. Happy Easter. Everyone, uh, in the comments have been wishing everybody happy Easter as we do too and, and that he is alive indeed. Everyone, <coughs> sorry, was um, oh, so delighted with Rosie's children's talk. Uh, but Richard Cooley is the one with comments uh, week after week. He comes up with the best one that, uh, yes, have a happy Easter, but don't eat too much chocolate. Well, I don't know how that's going to go down with everybody. <laughs> and I really appreciate it, Douglas and Elizabeth. They took up our offering virtually and uh, put details on their posts as to how you can continue to give at this difficult time when we're we're not meeting, we're not bringing our, our offering. So thank you, Douglas and Elizabeth. That was really well, well timed. Um, Chris, Chris's singing's gone down a great hoot. Uh, and Thomas, he said that we'll bring love for sure to everyone. So uh, let's have, uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Be an expectant, as Chris has been saying, about seeing heaven on earth. Uh, that's our, our prayer today, to see all the goodness that there is in heaven has come down and it's accessible to us. So um, take that as your Easter gift from us. Yeah. Um, Sunday well and truly has a come. Uh, and again, we'll be having communion together as we've been doing over the past Sundays. Little note to the King's worship team. Rosie was playing tambourine during the worship. <laughs> <laughs> and according to uh, our local Friday paper, um, for those um, who are not in Inverness, uh, the front page headline was Let There Be Hope. And um, there was various articles from various churches, including from Chris, uh, bringing hope this Easter time. Uh, I would say that Easter Sunday is the most hopeful day of the year because it brings masses of hope. Um, at two o'clock this morning, I was doing my spot in the prayer 24-7, and um, I basically deleted what I was going to say um, because I had listened to today's daily devotion. And I'm going to use some of the words from that daily devotion. Isn't it beautiful that the very first person Jesus chose to appear to after his resurrection was not Pilate, not the chief priests, not Peter or one of the other men, but to a weeping woman with a dubious past? It's amazing that his first words are not a proclamation of power, but a simple supportive question, why are you crying? Then Jesus tells Mary, go tell his brothers that he is alive. At this time, when so many people are suddenly asking questions about faith right across the world, it is wonderful to be entrusted, for us to be entrusted 
with the good news of the resurrection hope. Not just for this life, but for the life to come. At this time when many people are locked indoors, afraid of breathing in the virus, it's interesting that the disciples were also locked indoors feeling afraid. And when Jesus appeared to them in that room, he breathed on them. He brought breath. And he brought life and a commission that would change the world. A lot of my friends and family uh, know that I've experienced isolation for over a year and a half following my stem cell transplants. But my lasting memory is not isolation, is not fear or the loneliness, but the joy that could be found in the journey as I walked it with my Heavenly Father. My good friend Tom Roller says, I came out the other end a changed man. This resurrection Monday morning, in the midst of the lockdown, I challenge you all to celebrate the freedom that is available to us all. Find the joy that is available to us all. Wherever you are across the world, this freedom and joy is available when you connect with Jesus. Not connecting with the cross, not with the tomb, but walking with each one of us who choose to believe. So when we take the bread, we'll break the bread, but it's a reminder to us about Jesus' broken body. It's not his body, but it's a reminder of his broken body. And when we take the, the wine, it is a reminder of the blood that was shed by Jesus for us. It's not his blood, but it's a reminder. So let's take the bread and the wine together and remember. Final prayer just to finish. Let us proclaim Jesus' life to a world full of uncertainty with the same passion and amazement that Mary felt on that very first Easter day. Bless you guys and have a great Easter day. Thank you, Mike. Thank Thanks, you, Fiona. Bye. Bye. Thanks, bye. Fantastic. So we've just heard <clears throat> Mike sharing the hope that we can have in Jesus. And you might be sitting there this morning and watching this and thinking, I don't have that hope and I want it. I want to understand who Jesus is. I want to, to, um, to know him as a friend. And so this morning you have an opportunity to do that. <clears throat> We're just going to pray a really simple prayer. If you're sitting there this morning and you want to pray this prayer along with us, there's opportunity for you to do that and to invite Jesus into your life that you would know him and that you would be able to experience the life that only he can bring. And so we're just going to pray now really, really simply. Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me, change me and set me free. Let me never be the same again. Jesus, I believe you died for me. I thank you that you rose from the dead and now pray for me in heaven. Help me to live for you and to fulfill everything you have called me to do. I thank you that I am now forgiven and on my way to heaven. In Jesus' name, amen.
if you've prayed that prayer for the first time this morning, if you're sitting in your living room and you're watching this and you've just prayed that prayer, we would be so delighted to hear from you. If you want to drop me an email, as Chris has always said, my email address is sarah at kingsinverness.com. I would love to, to have those emails and to be able to read them. We, we want to connect with you um, in, in that way. So please, please do drop us an email. It'd be great to hear from you. And I think that's us. That's it. So guys, thank you so much for joining with us. Thank you so much for sharing this. You know, our heart really is that the, the, the message of Easter, the message of Jesus goes out as far and as wide as, as we can spread it. So it's great to be able to do this yeah. via the technology that we have. Guys, we hope you have a great week. Don't eat too much chocolate. Or you may want to space out a little bit. Maybe you started already. <laughs> and uh, we hope to see you next Sunday. Fab. Thanks, guys. Oh, and a little sign from East from Evie. Happy Easter, everyone. Have a fantastic day. See you next week.